Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Hello, it's Tuesday night, it's 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Hopefully you can hear me just fine. Uh, if you can't, wave your hands wildly or something. Uh, let me know where you're checking in from. Uh, no, I'm not late. It's 8.30 p.m. on the dot. Everything's good. Hopefully everybody is uh, having a good week already. Uh, there's not much going on for me, which is always a good thing. Um, yeah, just sort of a chill Tuesday night. Um, no Lightroom Live until the end of the month, of course. So we're just going to kind of be going over some stuff that I've been working on on the bench. Um, yeah, we can sort of, there's a couple of projects that I put in the description that we can definitely take a look at tonight. Um, but, um, if you've got questions, you want to see things, you want to ask a question about how something is done, uh, I'm totally here for you tonight. So, uh, let's get into it. I'm going to cut over to the other uh, camera here and get rid of uh, my background. There we go. Ah, it's a tiny me. Ah, ah. <laughs> Don't crush me. All right, enough goofing around. No hat, because he can go to the groomer. Exactly. Um, the grooming lady helps me out. Anyway, uh, what you're looking at there is the Sadly, now discontinued from what I've heard, UMG-10, uh, with some changes, of course. Uh, yes, everything's been painted. Uh, cab's been repainted. Uh, bed from RC Scale Garage has been painted. And I have to say, I think it turned out pretty darn good. Uh, swap meet on Saturday. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I've got a, is it this Saturday? I don't remember. Um, anyway, let me know. The truck is taller than Matt. For once, I'm out of scale. <laughs> um, yeah, but this started life as the UMG 10 from Axial. Um, it's been, uh, you know, obviously the cage that uh, used to be on there has been removed and it's been replaced with this all metal um, Unimog style bed. And this is what a Unimog looks like. This is what they're, they're mostly like. And um, I've added some stuff to it. Obviously, I've weathered the whole truck. I used the oil dot method after doing um, some salt uh, technique on the actual cab. It's sort of hard to see, um, but it's there. Anyway, the whole thing's been weathered. It's got uh, Vanquish Curry portals underneath it, so it looks and acts just like a Unimog now, which is great. Night Customs front grill. I printed this at home, added a fair lead, and um, yeah, that's about it. Interior is the basic interior that comes with the truck, but uh, I've done a whole bunch of weathering to kind of add some detail. The whole inside of the bed, um, let me see if I can turn this. There we go. There we go. Uh, none of this stuff has been glued in yet. I did put a spare tire holder from the actual plastic cage uh, on the, bo the bottom of the bed. There's wood in this bed, which I think adds so much detail. It looks really amazing. Um, RC Scale Garage on Facebook. Um, I will... Uh, Maybe I'll put a link in the chat. Uh, yes, it does still hinge. Um, anyway, all of this stuff, I printed all of these things. These are all Knight Customs uh, uh, Pelican cases and fuel cells, all in ninth scale, which is sort of where this truck sits. Uh, added some other little bits and pieces here, but I've cut the bottom out of all of these because that's where the shock towers are. So now we just plop that right there. Glued in place, you'll never know. Brilliant. Uh, anyway, so that's sort of the beginning, sort of finishing stages of this truck. So there's been a lot of stuff that's happened. I actually also, I printed, I designed and printed a couple of doors to go on these actual, uh, on these original fenders from the, uh, the Lexan part of the, the original cage. But I just wanted to add some details, so I put a little, like, handle on there. Carlos Devia, thanks for the ten dollars. Hey Matt, do you use an airbrush? Yes. If so, what type? I use. Oops. Um, I use the Pash Talon. 
which is this guy right here. Uh, it's a great dual stage brush. I really like it a lot. Uh, and of course, Chrome just crashed on me. Surprise, surprise. So I'm just going to open up uh, this whole thing in another window so I can read the rest of your question. YouTube.com. Uh, just give me a second. Bear with me. I'm loading it up. I have to use uh, Edge for this now, which is kind of a pain. And there we go. Okay, it's back. Um, do I use an airbrush? Yes. Uh, uh, you got a Pash Type H from Amain. Ten dollars. That sounds really, really super affordable. Holy cow! Um, that's amazing. But well, good for you. Uh, $10 sounds incredibly cheap. This was not $10. I will tell you that right now. Um, but if it's Pash, you're probably going to be in, in good shape. Some people say Pache. Actually, look, I'm going to airbrush myself. <laughs> Video, Wes, these are all for you. All these screen grabs for you. Uh, pop the hood. Uh, well, the body. Okay, yeah, I've got some body clips holding that in there so hi Corey does it still hinge at the rear no Travis it does not the body does not or the the cage the bed does not hinge it's firmly mounted on there but the top still comes off and uh, that's where everything is at the front here on these trucks anyway these are some TPU 3d printed uh, fender liners in internal inner inner fenders whatever you want to call them uh, and they're just they're TPU, which is a flexible material. So you can actually like bend these right up and then they just flop back into position. They don't lose their shape after they've been printed because of the heat. Uh, but this is great. The, 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 the flexible ones are a lot easier to work with because you can kind of conform things around them. Um, yeah. So there you go. That's the UMG 10. I like the round tail lights as well. Uh, whoever it was that said that. Uh, Matthew Jorgensen, hello. Thank you. So, yeah, um, I'm pretty pleased with this. I, I would definitely suggest, like, if you are looking to do something a little bit different with your UMG-10 and you want to make it a little more Unimog adjacent, I would highly recommend getting one of these beds. They are really high quality. Uh, Marson, who designs all these things and manufactures them by hand, does an amazing job. Everything that you need is included. You can get it primed uh, from him, and uh, then it's just up to you to paint and detail and weather to your heart's content. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how this build's turned out. Somebody was asking about the wheels. These are, uh, I printed these on Shapeways about, I don't know, six years ago, I'd say. Uh, they were originally designed for the Mad Moose portals, and if anybody here has been that here in a long time, uh, you would know uh, who Mad Moose is. He did C-303 portal axles before anybody else was doing portals. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what those are from. They're originally for a C-303. So that's the build. Oh, you sent me $10 and spent $250 on the airbrush. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Thank you very much for the $10. Much appreciated. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's like, that's the greatest deal of all time on a Pash airbrush, especially for Mamie. <laughs> that's great. Uh, okay, so um, hit that like button. Yes, please. Uh, I'd love to hear what you did to make the caked mud in the treads of the spare. That's just real mud, Paul. <laughs> Did I use a Dremel to cut those crates? RC Premium Northwest? Yes, I did. I did use a Dremel to cut those those out. Because um, nobody's going to see that. So I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> but it's a good way to hide those things. A couple of boxes. And it, you know, it looks legit. You have all this junk in the back. Let me see. Uh, eh, eh. There we go. All that junk in the, in the trunk. And it looks realistic. Uh, yeah. Hi, Bullgear. Welcome. Um, 
just going through the chat here. Picked up a resin printer. Hi, Brazen. How are you? Uh, you owe me a message. <laughs> uh, resin printers are amazing. Uh, flexible resins are even more amazing. Uh, I don't have anything here anymore. The Rock Van. Uh, it had some parts from RC Nerds that he resin printed for me. And uh, he did print some of them in flexible material as well. And it uh, it's a really cool technique for sure. What's your go-to comp and trail truck? Uh, comp? I'm not much of a comp guy, so uh, VS410. Um, but I'm definitely looking at getting a brazen scale chassis to do a proper... Um, uh, you know, proper comp truck, if you will. Uh, the oh yeah, the link. I gotta put a link in the in the chat there. Uh, let me see if I can get this face blog thing to load. Darn, Chrome keeps crashing on me. I don't know what's going on with that. Let's see if I can uh, quickly bring that up. Facebook. Uh, I think it's just. RC Scale Garage. The page isn't available. Hmm. Oops, too many S's. I'm still new to the internet. Nope, that's not it either. Um, someone else will have to quickly Google it for me uh, because Chrome's being mean to me tonight. Uh, what's next? Junk $300 Pelican cases. Sorry, I don't know what that means. Looking good. Yeah, I, you know what? The UMG 10, I think, didn't get enough love when it first came out. Um, I kind of wish that it got some more attention. List. Oops. Uh, well, somebody was asking to see the Gladiator, so here it is. Um, I haven't really... To be fair, I haven't really done much with it recently or lately. Um, it's still pretty much just where it was at the end of stage three. I've got some more things I have to do to it, um, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Where do you get the bed? Sorry, Philip Bender. It's uh, RC Scale Garage on Facebook. Look him up there. He's also on Instagram. That I can definitely share with you. Oh, here, I can just look up Facebook on my telephone. Put the link in here. All right, what is it? Oh, he's got a whole website. I'll just put that in the chat. Scale-garage.com slash accessories. There, in the chat. Do you Dremel much? <laughs> I Dremel a little bit here and there. <laughs> uh, do I have any rigs with a revolver in them? Yes, I do, Maxwell. And I'll happily pull that out here in a second. Uh, can you recommend a servo for my SCX-10 III? It's the competition RC car, so I need powerful. Uh, Homes Hobbies, um, they make the uh, direct power 3S, 4S, LiPo capable, um, HSV 500, I think it's called. So uh, that's what I would recommend. Please show the Gladiator done. Um, let me flip it around for you. There's a bicycle in the back right now, so I'm sort of like, that's sort of what I was doing with that. Uh, that bike is from Knight Customs as well. Scale Garage Systems also has a bed for the C10. Yes, that's right. Um, he does a, a lot of really cool stuff. License plates are from rcplateshop.com. You can check them out on the internet. Uh, any suggestions for upgraded foam for Proline Class Zero Crawler TAs? Um, I would start at um, Crawler Innovations. I'm sure he's got foams for the Class Zero Crawler tire. Um, how is the new bright fun haver coming along? It's coming along. It's still in bits and pieces. It's probably not worth showing anything right now. Um, there's a lot more that needs to be done before I'd be confident in showing you an update. I'll turn this around so you can get a look at the front. Uh, I've got the spec RC wheels on this one right now. I had them on the Bronco 
but only for a little bit. I think these look awesome on the Gladiator, and it's got the right offset to make it sort of like mall crawler kind of style, which I thought suited it quite nicely. Uh, can you show us the Bronco you're working on? Yes, I'll. You know what? I'll pull out the pieces. Uh, there isn't much going on in there. Oh, Travis, thanks for putting that link in there. Much appreciated. Um, oh, man, I missed a ton of chat. Sorry, guys. Uh, hey, you cut me a set of rails today. Ooh, boy, that's exciting. Thanks, Brazen. Um, I, I figure I'm still going to need some sort of transmission. And we'll talk about that later. Um, hi, Toby. Mog's looking good. Thank you very much. Um, Carlos, my wife really loves the movie Romancing the Stone. I'm looking for a Ford Bronco half cab from the 80s. You could try Cults 3D. You, you'll probably have to print it yourself. Or you'll have to maybe, you know what? Westmade might be into building something like that. You should definitely check him out. Uh, he's on the forum and builds some pretty spectacular trucks. Uh, cool. What are we Googling? <laughs> We're Googling things. We're just Googling stuff. Um, send me the... Uh, is, is that the one that um, Craig is running? The side piece? Is that the the um, the swap meet that Craig is running? Let me know. Scale garage system. What have I been saying? What was I saying? I was saying scale RC garage. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, scale garage system. Better. UMG sitting at the store locally. You need to snatch it up. Yep. Your junk in the trunk is $300 cases. It's trash. It is trash. It's this thicker. Uh, did you 3D print the mountain bike? No, that was printed at Shapeways. Uh, <laughs> they're pretty ridiculously awesome mountain bikes, though. I will tell you that. Uh, I did all the paint on it. And, you know, it took a long time to print those tiny little letters. But um, this is a really nice design from Night Customs. It doesn't, it's not functional. The wheels turn, but that's about it. But I mean, like, even look at the tires. See how, like, there's even nubbies on them? It's pretty amazing. It's, it's very cool. It's a nice addition to any, uh, any um, sort of diorama, if you will. It does look pretty good. This one is within scale it's supposed to be anyway but it still looks kind of small because this is a giant lifted jeep um should have painted your topper <laughs> hi kevin um do you think axial might bring back the six by six in kit form uh doubtful i think that they're trying to phase out anything that is scx 10 2 so i don't think we're going to see any new stuff on that platform any longer and that's just my guess i could be wrong it's been known to happen um but um yeah i don't think we're going to see much more on the scx 10 2 platform which is uh you know it's a it's an unfortunate thing they are they are still pretty widely accepted truck and a lot of people still like them and use them so you know it's just one of those things right um okay somebody wanted to see a revolver truck right um have you ever thought of doing different flares uh no i, I put club five or a uh, cc hand flares on that one so it's already got different flares um add mods you can get for the one to like i don't know what mods you mean cameron uh maybe give me some suggestions uh wr we can can run axial three gear toizuki front mo oh man so many choices brazen thank you i'm excited about that uh reefs triple seven another good option for sure uh how do you feel about the homes micro esc for the outrunner well i actually have one um and i have a polar pro that i'm going to be using with it in the comp truck that i'm going to be building uh, for next year so um, let me get out the revolver trunk that I've got set up here. You might recognize it. It's the forerunner that uh, Tim traded with me. Um, 
It's looking a little orange there. This, I've got a new overhead light and it's super warm. It's the wrong color temperature and it's driving me crazy. I've already ordered another one to replace it. Uh, but this 4Runner, RC 4-Wheel Drive 4Runner, at least it started as a TF2. It's not much of a TF2 anymore. Um, it's now a lot less of that. Um, there's still like TF2 frame. But as you can see, GCM uh, LRT2 transmission, proper drop on the transfer case, uh, axial front axle, Curry rear axle with leaf springs, courtesy of the JEC leaf spring adapters. Um, and that's about it for TF2. Um, under the hood, we've got the, uh, the motor. Got a real motor under there, man. And underneath all of that, mated to that LRT2 trans, is a revolver. And if it were easy to take the body off, I would show you the revolver. Uh, it is very loud. In fact, maybe we throw a battery in it and drive it around the bench. That might be kind of fun. Um, so where can I get an Axial Unimog now? Robert, not many places. Unfortunately, uh, A-Main's sold out. Um, you can definitely... You can definitely look in the aftermarket. eBay might still have some. It, de it depends. Uh, Woodland RC, I did find an, a driver for uh, the, the Bronco. In fact, uh, ordered him today, so he'll be on the way. I got uh, Happy Days, Richie Cunningham, 9-inch driver figure. He's going to be a little bit short in terms of the actual math of it, but I think he'll probably work pretty well. He might actually be a little bit big. It just in terms of the way they've built out that interior, but we're going to see. We'll make them work. Um, by the way, that Outrunner upgrade for the SCX24 looks amazing if you want to put that much into an SCX24. Well, luckily, uh, SCX24 budget build-off starts tomorrow. And um, in fact, here is the donor truck that I'm starting with. It's a brand new SCX24. I'm not... Uh, ruining any of my older ones i'm using a whole brand new one so some upgrades have already happened on that that series starts tomorrow morning so uh definitely check that out and uh yeah those uh Furitex stuff uh, looks pretty awesome gray matter fab thanks for the five dollars did you see the cross rc jt4 that josh showed off today and what do you think of the body design on them would make a cool hard body build it definitely would uh i would love to see a licensed um jeep sort of like uh the ones did was that axial one was that licensed or was that just sort of a knockoff body as well uh it does look interesting it's crossed though so take that with a grain of salt um i'd like to see one up up close before i i kind of pass any judgment on it though i don't like to if i'm going to do a review or look at a, a vehicle i want to actually have it in my hands before i put anything out on it because you never know right pictures are very deceiving and without actually running it and driving it and knowing anything about it, it's really dangerous to get into that precedent. So anyway, uh, Quack RC, thanks for the $5. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Hey man, awesome build. I can't wait for my 110th Baja Ray. Oh, very cool. Just got the laser nut, but I didn't have, didn't have the, the, uh, didn't have the need, hmm. Just didn't have the, I need it feel the Baja Ray gets. Very cool. Yeah, uh, Baja Ray's awesome truck. Laser Nut, I think it's had its issues for sure. Um, I don't have mine anymore. Uh, but when I had it, I always blew a wheel. <laughs> Tiny Overlanding, not selling the Gladiator, if that's what you're asking about, unfortunately. Uh, good evening, Saturn V. Um, that Jeep is kick-ass. Thank you very much, Quacker C. Um, all right, I'll check out those things, Cameron. Thanks. Killer Yoda. Killer Yoda, man. Please no headphone users will die if you drive that on the bench. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I have any charged batteries that would fit right now. Uh, but there's a lot of cool stuff going on with this truck. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I mean, the majority of it was done when I got it. Tim did all of the heavy lifting on the bumpers, uh, the sliders, the body, the paint. Uh, I had to upholster the front seats, which was uh, pretty easy considering this fabric. You don't really, you, there's, there's no way to screw that up. Um, I also printed out the seat 
um, mounts for the uh, chassis as well, or for the body as well. And pretty pleased with how that turned out. Looks good. Um, new homes ESC eliminates that sound. Correct, Jonathan. It does, and that's why I'm going to be putting it into a comp truck rather than uh, a trail truck. Trail trucks, I don't. For some reason, I don't mind the noise so much, but in a comp truck, I got to focus, man. I got to focus. So having it quiet uh, is going to be good. Uh, Dick Cunningham is going to be nine inches. Correct, Travis. <laughs> I like the way you put that. Uh, Opie Cunningham. This, okay, all right. Uh, how much do you want for the forerunner? I'm not selling, Tiny. You can keep asking, but uh, I'm not selling. Not this yet. I haven't even run it yet. I built it, and then it's sat while I'm waiting for the right opportunity. I should have actually taken it out last Friday, but I had other things I had to film. Uh, why do all of Matt's RC cars have one inch wheel spacers? I don't know what you're talking about, Cameron. I don't, I don't use wheel spacers. These are, these are not that far spaced out. This is just the wheel and actually one of the smaller hubs on that, on that, uh, on that wheel. So not sure what you're talking about. Some of the builds definitely deserve a wider spacing. If it's an off-road truck, that's kind of like modified and lifted. It's going to be wider. <laughs> All right. Can you do the comp stance? Mike, uh, I'd be happy to. Um, sort of hard to do it here because I don't think it's going to probably won't recognize that I'm. There we go. That's pretty close. <laughs> Hi, Changi. Late to the party as always. Have I considered using a Dremel? I've considered it. I don't think there's anything on this truck that's worthy of Dremel usage. Um, I like this truck a lot. Like every time I look at it, I get it out and I look at it and I go, yes, you know what? This is a good truck. The fact that it's I've ruined it or the fact that it's been ruined with uh, leaf springs, I just, ah, oh, I like I like annoying Josh with this one because it's got a curry axle and leaf springs. It's like the best of both worlds for me. <laughs> um, there's also uh, a traction bar on the rear, so I don't completely ruin these axles. You can actually see it right there. So this traction bar connects to the actual axle mount or to the leaf mount. And then what it does is it prevents axle wrap so if i hold these front wheels you won't be able to spin those leafs around and bend them right around each other it's uh amazing this truck actually should perform pretty darn well i can't wait to actually take it out i'm kind of nervous because i don't want to wreck it i like it so much um but yeah is so is this just a toy plastic body sorry for not already knowing yes bill uh this is from RC Four Wheel Drive, it's a forerunner body. This one's been modified, obviously. The doors have been removed, replaced with tube doors, and the bed has been bobbed. So I'm gonna show you that. There we go. Uh, it's this much has been cut out, like about an inch or so. So there you go. Do I have any Tacomas? No, I gave part of my noob my Tacoma body, and then he built that beautiful green truck with it. Um, you know, the one where he's holding the, the wheel like this in the pictures. Gunner, I've almost gotten through all of those bags. <laughs> There's Josh. You annoy me no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, look at this. That's great. <laughs> Anti-wrap. Leaf trucks need those. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Why not a rock jock front axle? Good question, Stephen. Uh, I'll allow Josh to answer that question. Because there are none right now. Uh, yeah, Gunner sent me, what did he send me? Like 30 plus bags of uh, jerky, all the same flavor, Korean barbecue, which is my wife's favorite. 
And um, between giving some to friends, I'm almost out. Uh, and eating a lot, yeah. Bracebridge Mountain. I'm on my way, Changi. Um, Robbie, I saw that you purchased that Actros. That's amazing. Any tips before you start the build? Get ready for a build. Because it's a long one. No joke, man. It's no joke. All right, next on the list. What are we looking at? Oh, yeah. Let's get this on the bench. Yeah. The Camtech three-wheeler. It's so ridiculous. I love this thing. Primetime, no, you can keep that Armageddon. Thanks very much. Why did RC four-wheel drive never fix the leading edge of the front fender from RC Premium Northwest? Jumps out at me every time. I know, it drives me crazy every time I look at it. But unfortunately, I think when RC four-wheel drive, or any manufacturer really, uh, decides to make a mold and then make that truck, they've already made a thousand by the time everybody gets them. And then that's it. So you'll never see a revision on that. It's just too expensive. So this is Crazy Vaklov's Place of Automobiles. Shifted into H. Um, I still have... Uh, Camtech makes this chassis and they send this body. This is a styrene vacuum formed body that I've modified ever so slightly. I put a front bumper on it and added the fly and painted it in the proper manner and then uh, put some Cyrillic number plates on there so you know it's i should have put an h on there now that i think about it but yeah too late now what i'll do i think is i'm going to put a lexan front window in and lexan windows on the side but what i'll do is i'll paint homer on the front window so it actually uh looks like he's driving i guess that sort of works yes this contains the camtech satan motor I don't know why he calls it that. I'm sure because it's a devil. Little devil. <laughs> the fly's the best part. Yeah, it's totally accurate. <laughs> um, you know, it uh, gets 300 hectares per ev for every liter of kerosene. <laughs> oh, boy. You need to get a lockdown so we can race this. Yeah, hey, I, I agree. Fun have her builds coming along, Stephen. Um, and I, there's not much to show. I haven't done a lot on it lately. Um, I need to jump back on that. Thanks for the reminder. I've got a lot of projects on the go. Uh, no kidding. Can we see the steam truck again? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, we can pull that out too. Uh, but before we do that, um, what did I want to show you next? Oh, I'm going to make sure I have it facing the right direction. There we go. Um, what was next? I thought I had something else on the list. Somebody, okay. Oh, sorry for the chair. Juan Rico, thanks for the $4.99. Uh, thanks for the content. What tape do you use for paint? I've used many brands, but my paint jobs still look worse than Josh. Okay. Paint and tape. Uh, I use basically... Two different kinds of tape. It depends on the body. For most Lexan purposes, I use this. And uh, this is 3M automotive masking tape. Uh, it's got a really great edge, really good edge. Sorry, guys. Um, hopefully, that has come back to life now. Uh, man. I've been having some major issues with this uh, with this system lately. Uh, not good, not good at all. I know I'm back now. Sorry about that. Um, where did we? F oh yeah, masking tape. So this one's got really good adhesion. Uh, it sticks to anything lexan especially um i would not use this for masking over other colors um yeah nicole's using all my wi-fi <laughs> no that was actually that was a whole pc crash it just decided that's it i'm just crashing uh let's get the camera fixed here again boop 
There we go. Uh, not in very good focus. I think it should be back to normal. It's not. You know, good. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. It's the worst, I know. Um, but yes, uh, if you're doing multiple colors and you're doing like just regular everyday acrylic paint, uh, blue painter's tape does the job perfectly. Um, but 3M automotive tape uh, is what I would use for Lexan on the inside. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, it's about as good as it needs to be. All right. I am so sorry about that. It's very annoying when that happens, believe me. Um, but Juan, I got your question answered. So there we go. Okay. Somebody was asking about my most competitive truck. Um, so let me get that. Or most, at least, what I would say is competitive. And that, obviously, is the jelly bean. Man, I love this truck. I love this truck so much. But I know someday I'll have to sell it. Even though I don't really want to. There will come a time when I get not happy with this truck. It hasn't happened yet. And I know that there are already people that want it. So uh, this is a VS410 Pro, or at least it started as one. Uh, all that's left is the basics of the chassis. There is no dig. Um, there is a... The only thing that, can, that would uh, alert you to the fact that it is a VS410. Hey, there's Ben. Hello, Ben. It's like, do you have a Chongil or a... Do you have a jelly bean alarm that just goes off <laughs> whenever you see this truck? What's going on back there? Some wires sticking out. What is that? Don't worry about that. Don't look over there. Uh, there will not be an auction. This is, I already know that the person who wants it will get it. Anyway, um, what have I got in there? Homes, hobbies, and... Holmes Hobbies again, BHL, BLS, SHV500, uh, Servo, some sort of Puller Pro. Um, it's got uh, Vanquish axles. It's got uh, links that are uh, the high clearance links in the rear. Uh, I did the uh, droop setup, so it sits very low. Even with this big, heavy body, it does perform quite well. Uh, and I, I love this truck. I did all the custom metal work myself. Did the body conversion myself. Ben's definitely going to, yeah, U.S. US citizenship for Jelly Bean. <laughs> It'll get it eventually. It's definitely going to make its way to the United States. I, I feel that it's in its future. Are you jelly? <laughs> I love this truck so much. I just love how weird it looks. Like, it's, it's a weird-looking truck. There's not a really pretty angle for it. Maybe that one. Maybe that's the... Anyway, uh, I did pinch the nose. As you can see, it's not nearly as wide as a normal 80 series body would be. Anything FJ80 is going to be amazing. I cannot agree with you more on that there, Dave. Um, so I was thinking, and it's not on the bench yet, but it will be soon. If you watch the review, I was like, you know, this FMS 80 series could make a pretty cool mini beam. So maybe we do that. Maybe we make a mini jelly bean. I don't think it would be that hard. That's what she said. I mean, I'm just doing the same cuts I did here. And then I could do the same paint job. That would be dope as. I would have to bob it. Uh, that's all doable. Yeah. Toyota is making parts for old Land Cruisers. They obviously see the value in making parts. Deli, Jelly Bean Jr. Fun size Jelly Bean. Lots of good names. I just wish that there was a Hyrax in the like 1.0 size tire. Maybe I'll get Proline to make me some. Because I have that kind of play. <laughs> Uh, Austin, I am not taking on any projects. Thanks for asking. Uh, I've got enough of my own projects to carry me through many, many years, so I can't uh, 
you know, in all good conscience, I can't take on other people's projects, unfortunately. Sorry. Uh, Jelly Belly. <laughs> yeah. I like this truck a lot. It's even got like a full depth bed and a decent interior. It's partially 3D printed interior and then partially VS410 Pro interior. It all just kind of fit together quite nicely because I planned it that way all the way through. Um, yeah, it's not like a cheater rig. It's not even really what I would consider a very competitive class two, but it's my best performing truck, I'd say. I mean, we don't know for sure because I've never really had it in a uh, actual competition. Injora makes a knockoff 1.0 Hyrax, eh? Interesting. The chipped paint, uh, thanks for mentioning that, Ben. The chipped paint was also one of my favorite uh, kind of ways of doing a paint job here. Obviously, it's the TRD theme, so it's got the yellow, orange, and red stripes. Um, but what I did was I painted the whole truck brown black first, and then I laid down a uh, coat of uh, this Vallejo chipping medium, which is like a um, it's like hairspray. It's got that same water soluble kind of uh, thing about it. Sprayed that over the whole body, and then applied a very thin coat of white, and then I think I did. I think I did the stripes next. Yeah, I did the stripes next. And then what you can do is you go in with a paintbrush and some water, and you can actually brush away and make all of these chipped bits of paint so it reveals the stuff underneath. And then you seal it with a clear coat, and then it just stays like this forever. And I think it just looks awesome. It was a really cool technique, and it worked out perfectly. I could not be happier with this truck. It points out, too. It's a 50-point truck. Um, Josh has to resort to all kinds of cheating in order to make it a 50-point truck. But this one is a true 50-point comp truck. I can't, can't remember for the life of me what servo is in there, but it's a powerful servo. Uh, and the great thing about this one is that when I built it, I built it to easily get at everything. So the body hinges off the back. Uh, just in case there's some sort of massive error, I can get at all the electronics in there quite easily. Uh, that might be a power shift winch, actually. Uh, yes, I do have a video of the jelly bean. Uh, not comping, but uh, driving. Um, so it's uh, on the channel. You should be able to find that fairly easily. Uh, but yeah, I used a little bit of uh, 3D printing there to get the um, to get the the uh, body to sit in there and and hide all of those electronics. It's uh, it's a good truck. I like it a lot. There we go. All right. What's next? You guys want to see? Oh, here, let me show you this. I think some of you have seen this already, uh, but I've got. This loops uh, 110 pickup body. Uh, and he, I think these are injection molded uh, by some sort of technique. But this is all his work. I get a full depth bed. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to put this on yet. I sort of bought it because I wanted it. Now I have no idea what to put it on. It sort of kind of should be coils. And I don't think they had leafs. Maybe they had leaves in the back. I don't know. Uh, base chassis of that quack was the VS410. So yeah, this is, this is going to be a fun build. You get all the bits and pieces to finish off the grill and headlights and all that stuff. I just don't have them handy. Um, but uh, yeah, really nicely nicely done job on this. It It is a very nicely molded bed. Uh, and it looks awesome. I can't wait to put this together. So that's in the works. Um, oh yeah, somebody wanted to see the steam truck, right? The roof is very Lloydish. <laughs> well, that's what those trucks look like. All right, steam truck coming at you. Can't get enough this thing. 
Oh. There's the Loco Hawk. Yes, it is steam powered. There is a giant steam engine underneath there somewhere. All of these rivets were hand riveted by me. Uh, this is from basically here back. It's all custom styrene work. Um, and uh, yeah, it's powered by steam. That's how it gets its locomotion. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it um, there's a battery in there to only power the servos, and the servos are for steering. Um, it also actuates forward, neutral, and reverse. And then there's a third servo for uh, steam delivery, so how much steam gets put into the system. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's, it moves forwards and backwards with steam. And this was based off the real truck. Um, Kenny Hawk sent me all kinds of, uh, photos and, uh, blueprints and all kinds of stuff to make this build happen. Front section is Gladiator-esque. Sort of. Yeah, Ben. Um, I mean, it's a JK. They had, I think they did a 6x6 six six JK at some point. Knight Customs, um, helped me make this grill. He used his, his base uh, angry eyes grill and then converted it to the one that has all the rivets and the steam pipes and everything and um there's a whistle on it there's all kinds of videos of this on my youtube channel no leaf springs on the defender 110 thank you um yeah oh dad this is i know it's ridiculously lol and on the on the original truck it's number 78, but because this is like, it's ninth scale, but you know, to kind of make the joke work, it's 7.8. So it's like 10th scale. Um, fun fact, all the fittings, like all of these fittings on the back here, all these pipes, these are real brass, uh, steam capable pipes for like guard and railway trains. And they're not functional on this truck. They're really just uh, decorative. And they were on the on the on the full size truck too. They were just decorative. Uh, but I was like, yes, I will spend real money on small brass pipe fittings. Got to make the truck look real. <laughs> so yeah, um, another fun fact: these are Vanquish products jk sliders and they're missing the the little armor plates because they didn't have them on on the full size truck either but uh these were really nice pieces that you cannot get anymore so so the, travis you got to see the real thing in person how heavy is loco hug it's heavy it's like when you put all the water in it it's uh it's probably a f like 15 pound truck it's not light nor fast nor very good at being a truck, but I, I had to build it. It had to be built. It was one of those things. It's stupid, but I love it. Oh, I'm making a mess. Oh, oh my man. There we go. Uh, hey, how about we look at the LS Post? That's always a good truck to look at. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Where did you get the rear bed? For what? The uh, Land Rover? That's from Loops RC. Uh, Loops, RC. Loops Model RC, I believe. Hey, Lone Star RC guy. Thanks for the $9.99. I'm about to start weathering build, uh, a weathering build using the Club 5 Comanche MJ body. Do you have any tips for weathering the rubberized fender flares? Yes. What did I do? Um, dry brush technique. If you want to make them look a little bit cruddy, uh, you can dry brush them with some oil-based paint. Um, fact, I used my oil brushers, uh, which is this product right here. Uh, this is from MIG. It is an oil-based paint, and it is in what is basically uh, like a mascara applicator for ladies. But um, you just dab out a couple of dabs of that, 
load it up into your brush, and then basically use a paper towel and erase most of it from your brush, and then just quickly apply it to the edges of your plastic fenders, and it'll um, it'll leave a nice kind of patina, sort of like. And then you can go in and airbrush some details later, but that's basically what I did here. You can see it's sort of like along the edge there, it's a bit shinier and that's just a different color. Uh, and it really does kind of make it look like a weathered, um, not just ladies, correct. Anybody who wants to use mascara, I should have been more inclusive. I apologize. Uh, but that's how to weather a fender. That's what I would do. Because I think the fenders on that MJ body are pretty big. One of the tires is debeating. On which truck? The steam truck? Yes, indeed. It is. Uh, the post. I wish I could claim this as my build. I basically just put it on a chassis. Wes built this truck and did a superb job. Wes made builds. Uh, he's on the forum. He builds all this stuff. And all I did was basically put a man in it and make it fit on this chassis. This is another VS410 uh, Pro. Yep. Um, with some slight modifications. No changes to the wheelbase. I left the wheelbase as is. Um. I just read Juan, Juan Rico's joke. I'll let you all read that one on your own. Um, but I did shorten the chassis. So the chassis got chopped uh, about an inch or two out of the back. Actually, a lot more than that. Maybe like three inches out of the back. And then another inch or so out of the front. Uh, but it all fits. And I think it looks so kick ass. Yeah, Wes does fantastic work for sure. He's got all kinds of bodies. I want to get one of his VW things. Uh, Gregory, uh, I'll leave that. Hey, pardon my noob. That's Ozzy Al in here. That's right. Ozzy Al made it into a build. Finally. Um, he's been in a couple of trucks, but I think he looks right at home right here. Good eye, mate. I'm Ozzy Al. <laughs> That's your, the best Australian accent you're going to hear tonight. Uh, yes, I am super chuffed by this truck. It drives so well, too. If you've watched the running video, it doesn't really have a hard time getting over anything um, because the body is surprisingly light. All of the weight is very low. Uh, it's, it's just great. Uh, pardon my noob. Uh, you guys should go back. If you haven't, go watch last Wednesday's stream. Uh, Richard was on with uh, Josh and I. He went over a bunch of builds he's working on and a lot of stuff on his bench uh, is stuff that I would like on my bench. So, um, yeah, definitely worth checking that out. Ah, <sighs> no noob is here to troll us all. Yep. Why does Ozzy Al have... Oh, that's not fair. I'm not good at accents. I do the best I can. <laughs> um, Gregory, I would go check with Wes. Because uh, his... Uh, every truck is different, right? So his... Um, his... His prices vary based on the uh, complexity of the truck, and if he's done it before, I think it changes. So you should definitely go check with him. Uh, LS Post should go to Smiggins Folly. Yeah, I don't disagree. Uh, I, oh, I should mention that's a scale metal fab. Is that what it is? Scale metal fab? Uh, front bumper? This is the like bend and braze one. Like It comes as a flat sheet, but it's already been laser cut. And then laser sort of like uh, scored. So you just bend it up with some simple home tools. And then you just braze all the edges. And I left it raw because I thought it looked pretty badass that way. Um, with his logo on there. I think it just looks awesome. So there you go. Scale Metal Fab. Number, number kit? I haven't seen a number kit. Oh, wait. Maybe I have. Scale Metal Supplies. What's wrong with my brain tonight? Terrible. Um, yes, thank you. Scale metal supplies. Anyway, that's the LS post. 
Um, quite the little truck, I have to say. And you're like, where's the battery go? Good question. Uh, I, I made it. So there's a tiny little box in the back here. And uh, I have some batteries that fit perfectly in there. And uh, I think I even, like, there's a way to, like, strap it in. I, I don't remember. Anyway, it's never fallen out. Because I think I slide it in underneath. Slide it in. And yes, F9's under there, too. Is that, is that what comes with the Pro? Maybe I bought a chassis kit with the VFD and then I had the F9s. That's probably more likely. I don't think that was a Pro. Or maybe it was. I just bought a Pro. What did it go into? I don't remember. My brain, at this age, it's pretty easy to forget everything. <laughs> um, what else to show you? Oh. Body is fused permanently to the chassis? No, body is removable. Uh, there are two uh, small bolts on both sides that are holding it in place. Um, but they're, in, they're on there really, really good. Uh, but yeah, if you needed to remove it, you could. It'd be better if it was a Dodge. To I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. It does need to be. We need a Dodge Dakota body, guys. And why don't we have one of those? <laughs> um, that, I feel like there was something else, but I can't remember what the description said. Uh, does anybody else remember? Bought a pro kit because you did a live stream and built a chassis for the LS Post. Thank you. Is that the axles that comes with that truck? I didn't think that they were. Oh, well. Did we break again? Something seems wrong. Yeah, it looks like the page isn't responding. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me. I mean, this might be a good place to end. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the whole web page crashed on me again. I'm not having the best of luck tonight. Hopefully it's still running. I'm just going to pop back over into the studio here. It must still be. Yeah, it's still running. I'm still here. Everyone else is still here. Just nothing's going on. Uh, all has been good except for that one time. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. If anybody's got any other builds they want to see, uh, now is definitely the time. Um, Bronco build. Okay. Ranger versus what? <laughs> no, the, the proper pronunciation on that is what? Anyway, uh, here's all you get on the fun haver for today. Nothing really has changed on the chassis. Um, but I made some mistakes and, uh, I'm fixing those mistakes. So first things first is I'm, I'm adding fenders or like fender extensions, which are just ever so slightly wider bits of styrene that have been glued to the body, as you can see. And what will happen is I'll, I'll contour these in. I'll probably add another layer before I'm done. And, uh, then contour these in so they're nice and smooth to the body and then i'll start doing all the bending required um i may I, i'm still not sold on the width yet so i'm sort of like playing with that a little bit the the gatekeeper chassis is not perfect for this project <laughs> no fun i request a refund you will not get one tim uh, oh, new early Bronco. We'll get on that one too in a second here. I have to leave the room to get that one. Uh, Nathan Worth, thanks for the four ninety nine. What do you think of expensive brush motors? Uh, Holmes Magnum compared to regular brushed, or should I just stick with brushless? Um, well, I mean brushless motors are pretty amazing. I think brushed motors still have their place. Uh, I like a brushed motor in a truck. Um, they're nice and quiet, um, and uh, you still get a lot of torque. 
they're different. It's a different style, right? There was no Dremel work with this. This was all, except in like for like huge pieces of removal. But no, otherwise I just sanded it. Um, so I don't know. I, I think there's a place for a brushed motor. I really do. Um, I still use them in a lot of my trucks. The uh, UMG10, for example, has a brushed motor. Um, what else has a brushed motor? Uh, hmm. <laughs> Some stuff does. Um, ever consider building a BTRC? I think that, honestly, though, I, I without getting too far out of the question here, I, I think that there are great applications for both. Um, brushed motors, I still think, have a better power band and definitely better low end. Unless you're talking about like an FOC style motor, then it's sort of like a toss up. But I like brushed motors. Always have, always will. Have I done anything to the Bronco yet? No. Let me go grab it though. Don't go anywhere. Here, I'll put something out. Well, here, here's a Bronco. I'll put this Bronco here for a second and then I'll go get another Bronco. All right. Trail truck brushed, comp truck brushless. Some people would say the other way around. Uh, but Holmes motors are fantastic. I've got a Holmes motor in the uh, in the UMG10. Like I was saying, oh my gosh, this thing is huge. Uh, Paul, I've never had a BRX01. I was actually looking for a used one for a project. Uh, cheer. Uh, I was going to put it under um, a truck, but I ended up not locating one quite yet. Not for the price I wanted anyway. Uh, but there is the Bronco. Um, yeah. It looks a little pale in this uh, in this um, sorry, my brain is not working. Uh, let's put a color correction on there. Fix that up. I think it's a little undersaturated. It's still pretty bright. There we go. That's better. Um, any plans for this? Well, I did pick up a driver, like I said, Richie Cunningham. I found him on eBay. If you just uh, Google or eBay search, uh, I start with Potsy. Potsy 9-inch action figure. You should be able to locate one. It is very large, yes. It's like seven scale, like I've said in the review video. Uh, running video will come out this week. Thursday, probably. Uh, I was thinking about a white grill on this as well, YSU, so we're both kind of thinking the same thing. I definitely want to paint the letters red. Beanie Radon, that's a great motor. I've got that in a lot of my trucks, actually. Um, yeah. The lack of holes in the grill bother me. Um, well, I know. I think that would be a huge amount of work. Uh, they could have molded that, though. They could have done that. Uh, wheels and tires, I'm probably... I don't know. I might stick with these. I do have... Where are those slot mags? I have another set of slot mags from... Where are they? I know they're back here somewhere. Where did you go? Where are you? Remember I had them on the, uh, oh shoot, I don't know where they went. Anyway. I do have another set of slot mags from um, uh, Team K&K. Dremel to fix the grill holes. I don't know. Uh, I think you'd see a lot of things underneath. Do you approve of this grill? <laughs> I don't disapprove. I think it could definitely be better. Um, it would be nice if the holes were in there. Yeah, now that I see it, I keep staring at it. If we make it white and we leave those holes black, that might be enough. 
Oh, my audio's on point. Thank you very much, Roy. That's very kind of you. Put a lift kit and 2.2s on it. <laughs> I think it's going to get a D-lift kit. I'm going to put 90s on here, ASAP. Make it more of a trail truck. The running video that I shot, um, it's going to show some, some action for sure. But um, yeah, I, th I still think it needs to be lowered. I think like if it sat right there, that would be perfect. 3D printing a new one is possible. Sure. Night customs to the rescue on the grill, please. Good idea, Joe. And hello. Good to see you. Yeah, I think if I think if we just masked out, like on this one, if we just masked out all those grill holes and left them black and just painted it white, that might look kind of cool. Diff covers black. Yeah, we could dye those black too. I don't know. I don't have a ton of plans for this yet, honestly. I'm going to get a driver in there first of all. Um, yeah, maybe some different tires. There's a lot of... I've got some cool skinny tires that I was considering. Where are they? Got like a, I've got a whole drawer full of tires. This might actually be worth showing on like a bench tour. Oh yeah, these ones. These Goodyear Wranglers, but they're like super skinny. I thought that might be like a nice kind of period correct kind of tire. Did I see Seafart Fire Truck? Hello, Seafart Fire Truck. Welcome. Uh, I thought this might be a good replacement. It's about the same height, but it's so much more narrow that it would kind of be more period correct. Anyway, real side lights instead of stickers. Uh, yeah, that might be something somebody might print up. How big are the stock tires? They're 4.7s, 4.7, 1.9s. But I thought this might be a good choice. Maybe also like the old uh, BF Goodrich KO2s that might look kind of neat. Steelies. What about, yeah, I've got those, I've got those new Vanquish uh, Steelies. Those might look kind of neat on there too. I don't know. We're going to have to play with it. Definitely 90 mil shocks for a start. Uh, I might swap out the stock brushed motor uh, and put something a little more beefy in there. How many squares is the truck? Well, it's a 12.3 inch wheelbase, uh, but it's like, I'm going to guess about 15 inches long. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, 21 ish. A white rim with slight rust treatment. Yeah, I might actually, I might look at dull coating the paint too. I might do a dull coat over the whole thing. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do any paint work to it. I think I might just leave the color. Seems huge with, yeah, it is. It's seventh scale. It's a big truck. Broncos obviously aren't. Here's the thing. If you, if you saw this and didn't have any other trucks around it, this is the perfect size. Because it, it looks really good. The tires are the right size. It's just sitting a little bit too high for me. If it were right there, that would be perfect. <laughs> the real question is, how are you going to ruin it? <laughs> um, Emily, on that Bronco fun haver that I'm building, that is not Lexan. It is a styrene body. It's a new bright styrene body. Uh, and it is being glued together with uh, what is effectively known... I use uh, MEK, uh, but this you can buy a Micromark. It's the same stuff. It's a professional plastic welder. Uh, works with styrene, butyrate, ABS, and acrylic. And that's what I use. And I keep it in two types. So I never knock it over. Because I used to knock this over all the time. How does this compare to the Gladiator? Oh boy, let me show you. <laughs> Here we go. I mean, the Gladiator is ninth scale, so the, the Bronco is still going to look massive next to it. 
This is like, you asked me to put the two largest trucks on the bench. <laughs> Here, I'll line up the tires there. There we go. Uh, I did this. There's a picture of this on Instagram of the JL and the and the Bronco. So you get a better idea. Um, but yeah. Oh, a surfboard on top. That would be a nice little addition, Brian. I like that idea. Um, so yeah, it's quite large. But like I said, it's not... It's not large in that it's huge in the scale that it's in. It's in the right scale for, you know, it's seventh scale. So it's big compared to other trucks in the market. But those are all ninth or tenth or all over the place. Same stuff for the slurry mix. Yes, MEK mixed with uh, bits of styrene. Um, yeah. Is there a way to make the cage and doors less plasticky? Well, I mean, you could try painting them. You'd have to find the right kind of paint that bonds, but I've never found a plastic paint that bonds well to this type of plastic. It always kind of looks a bit phony. I don't mind that, if I'm honest. I mean, it kind of looks like a powder-coated cage. 949s, you can send me a surfboard, eh? Uh, make sure it's big enough. Seventh scale, please. <laughs> but uh yeah honestly if you uh if you have something that you want to print or you've got a stl for a surfboard let me know i'll print it out <laughs> timothy Locke, i'm not a found on russian dump kind of guy oh found on oh ford i get it but i'm gonna have to order one of these yeah well it's a good looking truck i'm not gonna lie and uh the time that i had with it on the trails, it did quite well. Surprisingly so. I thought it was going to be really top-heavy and flop over a lot, but it managed to keep its own for a long time. Um, the size of the battery, you can put, I put uh, like a 5,000 milliamp 3S LiPo pack in it when I took it out. Um, one of these fits without any trouble. It's a nice big size battery, so uh, that fits easily into this truck uh either on the side or in its uh rear compartment so yeah yeah i thought like when i looked at it i was like oh man this is so heavy uh but it's not it's not really that heavy the body is quite heavy but despite that it did perform pretty well i took it off some jumps too and you'll see it in the video uh, maybe thursday i'll have that one come out um but uh yeah it definitely worked pretty well Need some SPG stickers, especially the Ford Chevy logo. Oh, yeah. Where is... Do I have any more of that one? I feel like I used them all up. Ah, crumbs. Those are the new sheets. Where's the old sheets? Ah. I don't know if I have any of the old sheets with that left. Ah, oh, darn it, I don't. I could put the... <laughs> I could put the lifted Chevy one on there. Is that a good one? I'll put that one on there for now. These old sheets, these are like collector's items now. Never to be made again. Put it right there. There we go. Lifted Chevy. Are those wheels the same that Proline is releasing? I have no idea, Paul. I don't even know that... I didn't know Proline was releasing these. The new sheets have the Ford Chevy. They do? Must have used it up of that already. Twice. Oh, wait. Chevy or some other truck, right. Oops, did I move the camera there? Sorry. Chevy or some other truck, that's fine with me. All We, we all have our own opinions, and I can respect you for your choice. I could put that one right under chuffed. And beside... This this isn't this is the new sheet. What? Oh, the bumpers, the license plate. Right. Okay, okay. <coughs> oh, I'm losing my voice. We should probably end this stream so I'm not like ruined for tomorrow. Um 70s Baja 1000 paint schemes that would be sick too. Um 
Danny, you're, yeah, uh, the Traxxas 4000 3S will fit just fine. I mean, you'll have to swap connectors. Um, the Rift wants to flip over just turning slow. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to turn with the Rift either. When will this be for sale? Soon? I think. I think it's soon. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's see. I hope these fit. I kind of made these... Let's get that out of the way for a second. Kind of made these to... Oh, yeah. That's almost perfect. Axials are a little bit wider than... This is funny, though. Like... <laughs> yeah! Yes! Thanks for the reminder on those plates. That just made my day. <laughs> Brian Sherwood, thanks for the $2. Your stickers are as rare as rippers, but not as expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah. August 27th is your... Uh, you can pre-order them now on A-Main. Um, I may even have put a link in the chat. Uh, not in the chat, in the description. Um, but, uh, yeah. There you go. That's a great addition. I'm so happy with that. All right, uh, we're going to end this now. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, watching and participating and uh, playing along. Uh, I missed, of course, in the three times I had to restart Edge. Uh, I've lost all the people who donated, uh, other than Brian Sherwood. Thank you very much. I know Lone Star was in there. Uh, Nathan Worth was in there. Um, and that's all I've got. Quack RC, I know you donated. Um, my apologies. I hate forgetting not seeing everybody on there, but, um, that's it. Yeah, you can pre-order it now. Definitely. So that's going to do it for tonight. Thanks everybody for watching. Much appreciated. Uh, and thanks for checking in on what's on the bench. There'll obviously there's going to be lots more stuff on the bench. Um, yeah, that's it. See you tomorrow night, 9 PM Eastern, Josh and myself doing live stream takeover. We'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Have a nice evening. St Stabby, oh no, $1,000. Take care, everybody. Love you, bye.